Welcome. This is my instructional video for pre-calculus. This is section 4.1, rating and degree measure. Okay, here we go. Here's the keys. So, on the Cartesian coordinate system, what we're going to do is we're going to take the positive x-axis. That is going to be 0 degrees, or 0 radians. Usually we abbreviate radians by R-A-D. Rad, baby. Movie rad. Okay, and then, so this is called the initial side, and then when we measure the angle, and by the way, this is the Greek letter theta, we'll talk about that in a second, and then <clears throat> we measure this angle, so we start from the initial side, and we go however much the angle is, and then this guy here is called the terminal side, terminal means end, right, so that's the end side. So the terminal side always determines angle theta. So we're always measuring from the positive x-axis. That's the key here. And then if we go counterclockwise, that's a positive angle. And if we go clockwise, that's a negative angle. I don't know why it is in math. It doesn't make sense. So on a compass, which I think preceded the Cartesian coordinate system, 0 is north at the top, and then 90 degrees is east. And then 180 degrees is south. And 270 degrees is west. <clears throat> Notice here, positive is going clockwise to the right. And we start at the vertical position. Zero. Math? I don't know. We start over here as zero on the positive x-axis. And we go counterclockwise is actually the positive direction. Okay, and there's, this helps you remember that is, hey, you know this from 6th grade math, where x and y are both positive, that's quadrant 1, and this is quadrant 2 over here, and then down here in the lower left is quadrant 3. These are Roman numerals, of course, if you don't recognize those. And then the last one here is quadrant 4. Notice we're going counterclockwise, increasing. Start with quadrant 1, then quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant so there's a hint. You already know this deep down. Okay, angles are commonly labeled with Greek letters. So we go back to the previous slide. This is the most common one we see for angles. Just like for, you know, a letter X in algebra is a variable. And you can use any letter you want, almost any letter you want, okay, for a variable. But the most common one is X. You, know, you can use any Greek letter you want for angles. But the most common one is theta. So this is going to be the Greek letter theta. Okay, but here's uh, alpha and beta. Now, here's a really important definition. Angles that have the same terminal side are co-terminal. Co, same, endpoint. <clears throat> okay, so here's angle alpha and angle beta. They have the same terminal side, so alpha and beta are co-terminal. So let's say alpha is mm, 240 degrees, roughly. So what would beta be? Well, beta would be negative 120. So 240 and negative 120 are coterminal. And coterminal is important because when we do the trig, sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, cotangent, that, hey, all those trig values for 240 are the same trig values for negative 120. So the sine of 240 is the same as the sine of negative 120. The tangent of 240 is the exact same as the tangent of negative 120. So all those guys that are coterminal are going to have the same exact trigonometric values. Okay, and then here's an example here. So this is where we're going opposite directions from the initial side. Here we go the same direction. We just do a whole extra turn. So let's say alpha is 40 degrees. So notice beta is the 40 plus all the way around the circle a whole time from there, which is 360. So 40 plus 360 is... 400. So, how many ways are there to name this angle? The answer is infinite. I'll give you an example here. Let's go back. Go back to this side. This slide right here. Okay. Boom. So, 
here we go. So this is zero right here. And then let's say that's zero degrees. So if we go all the way around, where is this at now? And this is this is what we're going to talk about here, zero degrees. Well, that's 360 degrees. And then we go all the way around again. Big circle. That's another 360. That means we've gone 720. We can go all the way around the circle again. That's another 360. That's we're talking 1080. And when does that have to stop? The answer is it doesn't. So the ellipsis means it goes on forever. So there's an infinite number of names for this side right here. Now, that's just positive names. What if we went in the negative direction? So we go around this way, that'd be negative 360. And then we went, again, 360 degrees in the negative direction. That'd be negative 720. And then negative 1080. And then negative whatever, whatever, whatever. It goes forever in both directions. Wow. That's some crazy stuff, dude. Yes, it is. Okay, so definition of a radian, because that's really the, the objective here, is to convert angles between radians and degrees. Okay, one radian is the measure of a central angle, theta, right, that intercepts an arc S, so here's arc S, that's equal in length to the radius R of the circle. So that's one radian. One radian correlates to about 57.3 degrees. Okay, so that's one radian. Now, Here's the way I like it. I'm not particularly fond of this definition. I think it's overly complex. Here, here's how I always define a radian. It's the arc length of the unit circle for a given angle. So what's the term unit circle? That's going to be in the next video. Okay, unit circle is a circle centered on the origin with a radius of one unit. Hence, it's called the unit circle because it's a radius of one unit. And so what does that mean? That means this is one right here. And how far is it around? And this is the arc length. Well, what's the arc length around a circle? Well, okay, so here's the circumference formula for a circle. C equals pi times the diameter, or 2 pi times r, the radius. So if the radius is 1, so if we substitute 1 in here for the radius, then the, the radian measure all the way around the circle is 2 pi. <clears throat> so here we go. We have our circle. So we start at 0. We go all the way around the circle. That's 2 pi. We go all the way around the circle again. That's going to make 4 pi. Etc. 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 Okay. Now, here's the thing. Let's go part way around the circle. Well, if all the way around the circle is 2 pi, then halfway around the circle is 1 pi. And if this is, so this is 180 degrees. Okay, and so here's the deal is, if this is 180, half of that is 90. Half a pi, though, is half a pi, or you could say pi divided by 2. So pi divided by 2 is 90 degrees. And so this is 90 degrees. Another 90 degrees is 2 pi over 2. Well, 2 pi over 2, that reduces to be 1 pi. And then we're going to go another pi over 2. So 2 pi over 2 plus another pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2. And then to complete the circle, we go another 90 degrees, another pi over 2 radians. Well, 3 pi over 2 plus another pi over 2 is 4 pi over 2. And notice 4 pi over 2, 4 over 2 reduces to be 2. So that's 2 pi. And you can keep going on like that forever. So you can go 172 pi, let's do 171, 171 pi over 2, so that doesn't reduce. That's, a, that's one of these four spots on the unit circle. And since it doesn't reduce, we know it can't be these spots here. It's going to be either the same as 1 pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2. Whoa, dude. Crazy, huh? And this is the advantage of the unit circle over... Um, Sokotoa. So if you remember Sokotoa, that only applied to the acute angles of a right triangle. So the angle had to be more than zero but less than 90. 
And here, notice when we do the unit circle, we can do any measure we want. So if you put the sine of 171 pi over 2 in your calculator, it's going to give you a freaking number. Because there's a value for that. Okay, determine the coterminal angle, which is in the domain 0 to 2 pi. So notice 13 pi over 6. Well, here's, here's our analysis. So 13 pi over 6, I want to come all the way across the circle because this is a positive value, so it's more than 0. But the question is, is it more than 2 pi? Well, in terms of pi over 6, what's 2 pi? Well, 2 times 6 is 12. So 12 pi over 6 is the same as 2 pi. So what is 13 pi over 6? It's 12 pi over 6 plus 1 more pi over 6. Oh, so that means I go all the way around the circle. So I end up here at 2 pi, and then I go another pi over 6. Which means this is coterminal with, because the question says, determine the, the coterminal angle in the domain 0 to 2 pi. So hey, this is the same as pi over 6. There's my answer. Bam. Negative 5 pi over 4. Okay. So where's negative 5 pi over 4 at? Well, it's going to be negative uh, 4 pi over 4, which, by the way, that's negative 1 pi, plus another negative pi over 4. And if you didn't realize that pi over 4 is half a pi over 2, so half of 90 is 45 degrees. And so here we go. So we start at 0. We go halfway around the circle. So there's negative pi, which is the same as negative 4 pi over 4. And then we're going to go another. That's supposed to be a 4. Then we go another pi over 4. Boom. So this is negative 5 pi over 4. Well, what is that going this way? Because it says we want to express it by a coterminal angle, which is in the domain 0 to 2 pi, so it's going to be positive. So going negative 5 pi over 4 is the same as going positive some amount of pi over 4. Well, hey, this is positive 4 pi over 4, right? Because that's 1 pi. When we go this way, that's positive pi. If we go the other way, that would be negative pi. Right, but so going the positive way, this is positive pi, which is positive 4 pi over 4, and then we're going to go back a pi over 4. So what's 4 pi over 4 minus 1 pi over 4? Well, that's going to be 3 pi over 4. So there's our coterminal side in the domain 0 to 2 pi. More than 0, less than 2 pi. More than or equal to 0, less than 2 pi. One more. Yep, negative 11 pi over 3. So, same thing. Well, we're going to go, this is 0 right here. I'm going to go all the way around the circle. That's going to be negative 2 pi. What is negative 2 pi in terms of pi over 3? Well, 2 times 3 is 6. So, this is going to be negative 6 pi over 3. That's a whole circle, right? Because negative 6 over 3, that reduces to negative 2 plus negative 5 pi over 3. So we're going to go whoop, all the way around here. There's negative 6 pi over 3. And then we're going to go uh, negative 7 pi over 3, negative 8 pi over 3, negative 9 pi over 3, negative 10 pi over 3, negative 11 pi over 3. The easy way to do this is say, hey, well, what is this guy compared to? Uh, going 0 this way. It's going to be positive pi over 3. How's that? Just take negative 11 pi over 3. And we know if we add uh, 2 pi to it, if we add 2 pi to it, that still leaves us negative, uh, a negative number. We want to be in the domain 0 to 2 pi, right? We want to be positive. And so we're going to add 2 pi. Obviously, we're going to add 2 2 pi's. So we're actually going to add 4 pi. Okay, so what's 4 pi over 1? in terms of pi over 3. So we do a conversion. The way we always do a conversion mathematically is we multiply by 1. 
So 4 over 1, so that's going to equal something over 3. So 1 times 1 equals 3, so this is 3, which means the numerator has to be a 3 for the box to be 1. 4 times 3 is 12 pi. And then we go, oh yeah, 12 divided by 3, that's 4. So 12 pi over 3 is 4 pi, 2 times around the circle. So 11 pi over 3 plus 12 pi, which is 2 times around the circle. And we get positive 1 pi over 3. There's our coterminal side here. In the domain, 0 to 2 pi. Find the complement and supplement of 2 pi over 5 and 4 pi over 5. So 2 pi over 5. The complement means it adds up to make 90. So 2 pi over 5 uh, plus what equals 90? So that's going to be plus some number equals 90 degrees, which is pi over 2 radians. So what's the common denominator for 5 and 2? That's going to be 10. So we're going to multiply by 2 over 2 here. Let me change colors. So we multiply by 1, which in this case is 2 over 2. And over here we're going to multiply by 1, which is going to be 5 over 5. So 2 times 2 pi is 4 pi over 10. Plus some amount is equal to 5 pi. over 10. And so that means 4 pi over 10 plus what equals 5 pi over 10? Boy, those 10s are looking sad. Uh, it's going to be 1 pi over 10. So there's the complement to the first one is pi over 10. And then the supplement... Oops, the supplement right here is going to equal, hey, what, what does it take to add up to make 180? Well, so that's going to be 2 pi over 5. And by the way, 2 pi over 5 would be like right here. So 2 pi over 5. So there is some amount that adds to it, pi over 10 we know now, to make pi over 2. But the question here is, how much do we add to it to make uh, 180 degrees, which is pi? So 2 pi over 5 plus some amount equals 1 pi, which is pi over 1. So what's the common denominator for 1 and 5? Well, that's going to be 5. So we multiply by f uh, 1 here in the form of 5 over 5. This guy's already got the right denominator, so we're cool and sexy there. So we get 2 pi over 5 plus some amount is equal to 1 times 5 is 5 pi over 1 times 5 is 5. So 2 pi over 5 plus what number equals 5 pi over 5? That's going to be 3 pi over 5. <coughs> There we go. And do the same thing with 4 pi over 5. Well, 4 pi over 5 is almost a whole pi. So 4 pi over 5 is going to be right in here somewhere. I need a circle. And 4 pi over 5 is more than pi over 2, which is 90 degrees. So what's the complement there? I don't think it has a complement. I don't think we can do negative numbers as complement. So I think we're just going to say it has no complement because it's bigger than uh, 90 already. So what no angle added to it makes 90? No positive angle anyways. And so we can do the supplement, though. So the supplement is, hey, what angle do we have to add to that to make pi? Same thing. So 4 pi over 5 plus some angle in radians is equal to which is 1 pi over 1. 
So we're going to multiply by a common denominator between 1 and 5 is 5 again. So we're going to multiply by what in the form of 5 over 5. So we're going to get 4 pi over 5 plus some number is equal to 5 pi over 5. So, four of these pi over five guys plus some number of pi over five guys equals five of these pi over five guys. So that's going to be one pi over five. Final answer. Okay, converting between degrees and radians. Here's the key is what this says right down here. And what that says is, a couple ways to phrase it is, hey, all the way around the circle, 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians. And if you reduce that to lowest terms with whole numbers, right, that means 1 pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. And here's how I'm always going to do a conversion. I'm going to multiply by 1. Because what's 1 times any quantity? The same quantity. It'll just be expressed in different units. So, for example, and that's what all this stuff in the box here says. Let's say I have 50 degrees. I want to convert degrees to radians. So I'm going to multiply by 1. It's all about how we set up the number 1 here. What cancels degrees in the numerator? Multiplying by degrees in the denominator. And I'm going to convert two radians. So the units, in science class we call this unit analysis, the units, analyzing the units, will tell me where, what numbers go where. So we know this is equals right here. So how many radians is equal to how many degrees? Well, pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. Oh, so the degrees are going to cancel when I multiply 50 over 80. That reduces to 5 times the pi, of course over 18. Oh my gosh, that wasn't so hard. No, you're right, it's not. And let's say we want to go the other way. We want to go pi, pi over 12 radians. And we want to convert that to degrees. So hey, we're going to multiply by 1. In math class, I always teach multiplying by 1, write the big box there. So, infinite ways to write the number 1, right? 1 over 1, 2 over 2, 3 over 3, pi over pi, you know, 27 over 27, whatever you want. Negative 16 over negative 16. As long as these two quantities are the same, this is the number 1. So, hey, what cancels radians in the numerator? Radians in the denominator. And I'm going to degrees. And I know 180 degrees is the same thing as pi radians. So the radians here are going to cancel out. The pi's are going to cancel out. I got 180 divided by 12, and that reduces to be 15. And my units are degrees. Boom. That's how this flows, baby. It's not that hard. Okay, express each angle on radian measure, 135 degrees. So again, 135 degrees. We're going to multiply by 1. Degrees in the numerator is going to get canceled by degrees in the denominator. So this is 180 down here. This is pi radians on top. So we have 135 over 180. Well, 180 is uh, 4 times 45. And 135 is 3 times 45. And then, of course, times the pi. So the 45s cancel out. That gets me 3 pi over 4 radians. Notice I'm usually pretty lazy in writing radians because if it's got pi here, it's obviously radians. That's kind of like a tell. It's a giveaway. A clue. They would say in police work. Okay, negative 270 degrees. Again, multiply by 1. Degrees in the numerator means I'm going to cancel that by multiplying by degrees in the numer or denominator. Radians up here, so this is pi radians. It's the same as 180 degrees. 
and 270 is 3 times 90. 180 is 2 times 90. That's supposed to be a multiplying dot, not a minus sign. And then times the pi. We don't want to forget the pi up here. But the 90s cross cancel, so how about 3 pi over 2? Oh, and it's a negative. Negative 270 degrees is the same as negative 3 pi over 2 radians. Radians to degrees. Negative pi over 2. Radians. We're going to multiply by 1. What cancels radians in the numerator? Radians in the denominator. So this is going to be high radians down here. And this is going to be 180 degrees up here. And so the pi's are going to cross cancel. So we're going to get negative 180 divided by 2, which is negative 90 degrees. Bam. Another way to do that is going from radians to degrees is especially easy if you're in pi because pi is the same as 180 degrees. So just substitute. So substitution. So negative 180 divided by 2. Bam. Negative 90. And then two radians. Well, since this is not pi, I'm just on a multiple of pi. I'm going to write the radians out. And then, so what cancels radians in the numerator is radians in the denominator. That was supposed to be an R. It got really sad looking. This is degrees here. So this is the 180. This is the pi. So the radians cancel. 2 times 180 is 360. And divided by pi degrees and 360 divided by 3.14 approximately notice that's approximation so it wouldn't be equal to so it would be approximately equal to it's going to be a little over 100 degrees so whipping out desmos here oh my computer's slow 360 divided by pi Oh, 114.6 degrees. So, approximately 114.6 degrees. A circle has a radius of 4. Find the length of the arc intercepted by a central angle of 240 as shown in figure 4.12. I don't have figure 4.12 copied here. So, an angle of 240. So... Uh, 360 is all the way here. Minus 60 is 240. Oops. No, 300 minus 60. How about this? This is 180 plus 60 more degrees. So this is 60 degrees here. That's 240 degrees. What's the length of this arc? Well... 240 degrees, we're going to do it, uh, com, uh, convert it to radians, because that'll give me the arc length on the unit circle. So 240 degrees times 1, and we're going to have degrees in the denominator, radians in the numerator. So it's going to be pi up here, and then 180 down there. 240 is 4 times uh, 60, times the pi, of course. And then 180 is 3 times 60. I don't know why I put the degrees marks up there, but okay. So the 60s cancel out, so how about 4 pi over 3? So, 240 degrees is 4 pi over 3 radians. Now, that's the unit circle. So that's a circle with a radius of 1 unit. Okay, let's try it like this. Then do the red, then do the thin. Okay. There's the unit circle right there. So this arc length, that is 4 pi over 3, which is a little bit more than 4. Now, 
The circle has a radius of four inches. So notice all circles are similar to each other. So they're just, they have the same shape. They're just different size. So if this has a radius of four, guess what the arc length here is? Because it's the same angle, 240 degrees. The arc length is four times four pi over three. So that's going to be four times four pi over three is 16 pi over three inches. That's going to be like almost 17, I think. Sixteen pi divided by three, sixteen point seven six. So, just just shy of seventeen inches. Bam. Second half of a clock is ten point two centimeters long, as shown in the figure, which I don't have. Find the linear speed of the tip of the second hand. Okay, so the second half of a clock is ten point two centimeters long. So the radius of this hand is ten point two centimeters. So, well, as this second goes around, it goes around uh, 360 degrees in one minute. So, 360 degrees in one minute. And one minute is actually 60 seconds. So, 360 divided by 60 is 6 degrees per second. And we want to find the linear speed. Well, the linear speed is based on the radius here. So this is 6 degrees per second. So 6 degrees, we're going to do 6 degrees. We're going to convert it to radians. So degrees down here, radians up here. So this is pi, of course, for the radians in the numerator, and 180. And 60, or 6 goes into 180 30 times. So this is pi over 30 radians per second. And then we just, and that's for the unit circle down here. So this guy's going around on pi over 30 radians per second. Well, this circle here is 10.2 times larger than the unit circle. See how sweet the unit circle is, one unit? Whoa, man. Okay, so we're just going to multiply this by 10.2. So this is 10.2 pi over 30. And that's going to be centimeters per second. Bam. And 10 over 30 is one third. One third of pi is going to be pretty close to pi. So it's going to be pretty close to 3. So 10.2 pi over 30. Let's kind of get a decimal approximation of that. 10.2 pi divided by 30. Hey, just a little more than 1. 1.06. I think I said pi. I got that. I twisted it up in my head. Yeah, that makes more sense. 1.06. Because this is a, this is approximately, approximately, pi, because ten goes into thirty approximately three times, and pi is three point one four. So three point one four divided by three is going to be a little more than one, like one point zero six maybe. Okay. A ten inch radius lawn roller. Oh, I copied the figure this time. Makes one point two revolutions per second, as shown. Find the angular speed. Find the speed of the tractor as it's pulling the roller. So we're going to find the angular speed, the speed in degrees per second, or radians per second, actually, because that's what they ask us for. And then we're going to find the linear speed. So at the end of the roller, because at, at the end of the roller, that tells you how fast over the ground it is, or it's moving, which tells you that's how fast the tractor's moving. Okay, so here we go. 1.2 revolutions per second. Well, what is... 1.2 revolutions. That's 1.2 times 2 pi, because all the way around the circle is 2 pi. So that's 1.2 times 2 pi radians per second. 
So that's going to be 2.4 pi radians per second. And then find the speed of the tractor. Okay, well here's the deal. If we go 2.4 radians per second in the unit circle, that's 2.4 inches per second, 2.4 pi inches per second, but this guy has a radius of 10, so this is 10 times bigger uh, than the unit circle. So we just have to multiply that by 10. So that would be 24 pi inches per second. And so that's 3.14, 3 times 24 is 72. So it's a little more than 72, probably around 74 inches per second, plus or minus a little bit. So 24 pi. We go to Desmos, we go 24 pi, and it says 75.39, or actually 75.4 inches per second. There we go. Okay, I believe that was it. It is. It's 36 minutes in. It's a long enough video. Okay, if you have questions at this point, you should probably contact me for tutoring, man. Other than that, have a good one. Later.